Hey guys, welcome back to Honkai Star Rail. In today's video, I wanted to do a bit of an in-depth combat guide. So if you're new to the game, this should get you completely across combat and everything that you need to know in the game. So first of all, we're going to start off with combat by being outside of combat because the first thing we have is if you look in the bottom right hand side of screen we have two abilities here now we have a basic attack which you can do just by clicking or you have an E ability now this E ability does have charges and by breaking things around the world you can gain additional charges now these E abilities for some characters it's buffs some characters it's damage it just depends for instance if I go over here to my Dan Hung and I use his E ability you'll see that he's got an attack buff for when we go into battle the next time so there's different uh buffs for different characters and stuff like that but that is like your first sort of combat ability um the other thing you can do uh going into combat is sometimes when you break some boxes and stuff you will get buffs the other way you can get buffs is by going here into the consumables and and chowing down on some consumables so da, 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 i see if this one's going to give us a buff so i can use this i can hit confirm uh, and then we can go out here. And as you can see over here on the right hand side, we do have special buffs. So we've got the one from our food. If you break some boxes and get some additional special buffs, they will show up here as well. Now, this is not something that's overly important because a lot of the content in the game that's actually hard, for instance, the chaos memory, which is like your tower mode, you can't use food or get those type of buffs anyway. So, you know, this is just a little thing that you might use from time to time when you're going through campaign and stuff like that so that's the basics from outside of combat now when you see an enemy let's run over here and we can see these enemies so once you get close to them you can see their weaknesses you can also click in on them and see what other enemies they might summon along the way to see what they're weak against as well so this will show you everything that they're weak against and you can see how these two enemies are actually linked together by a little line when that happens it means your fight will be a two-way fight and the the enemy that you hit will be the first one that you fight and the next enemy will be the next wave that you fight in the battle sometimes i've only seen up to three being linked but yeah often you will get two enemies linked together so it just becomes a two-way fight but when you see the weaknesses uh the things that they're weak against if you just use a basic attack to go hit them with a basic attack to go into battle it will say weakness and it will deal a little bit of toughness damage to the enemy's toughness bar which i'll explain more about the toughness bar when we get into it or if you use the e ability that deals damage you'll deal additional damage and do extra toughness damage to them so that's essentially what it is is in general, you kind of want to just use something going into combat using an element that's strong against them, unless it's the situation where you're using something like March 7th, where you want to try and freeze the enemies when you go into battle. That's probably like the one main exception I can think of. Maybe also Asta, but you're only really taking her to fire battles. So that pretty much covers it. So let's jump over here. Let's go into battle. I'm going to use my E ability on this guy. So I want to do it on this guy because he's the one that's weak against physical. So we can do that. And as you can see, it says weakness. Now enemies can also ambush you and then basically you get no bonus effects. So you can see that this enemy was weak to physical and we actually completely broke that enemy. Now, how are we going to break the enemies? You can see the enemies have this white bar on top of their health bar, which is called a toughness bar. Now, when you reduce that all the way down, it's going to put them into this broken state. Now, the way you're going to do this is just by attacking them with attacks that they are weak against. Unfortunately, with these guys, they're weak to imaginary and fire, and I don't have any imaginary or fire damage dealers on my team. Pretty bad, I know. But that is how you're going to reduce their toughness bar and break them. Obviously, bosses are going to take a lot more hits to reduce that toughness bar than others. Now, when we go on to the breaking, so this guy is broken and you can see we broke him using physical damage. So that is going to apply, if we click on him here, a bleed to him, which is going to deal damage over time. Now, if you do, you do break them with fire, it's going to give them a burn damage over time. If you do it with electric, it's going to give them a... Um, a uh, shock dot uh, and then for wind it's going to give them a wind shear damage over time effect and then for ice you're going to actually freeze them when you break them along with a little dot as well also when you do break them it is going to give you give them extra damage that damage scales off of your character's break effect and that is the main thing that you want to concentrate on with characters that have maybe multi-hit attacks that are going to break enemies often if you get them some really good break effect, it means they're going to actually do a lot of damage when they do break those enemies. Now, with when you break them as well, it's going to push their turn gauge back a bit. 
being the turn gauge on the left hand side and we'll go into this a little bit more in a minute. Now it does kind of look like they're stunned but it's not an actual stun. So once it gets up to this guy's turn he will just stand up from this and then attack. This confused me when I first played the game in the first beta because I was like, wait, isn't he stunned? Shouldn't he be down? Uh, but it's not a it's not a genuine stun. It's just showing you that they are broken, meaning you can deal extra damage to them and stuff like that. So that is the core around breaking. Now let's take a quick look at this turn gauge and then we'll go into the, all the abilities because the abilities are, are more of a simple thing to understand. So the turn gauge over here. This is basically in other turn-based games, you may see your team all have maybe a turn gauge meter. This is essentially what this is and you can see these numbers and they basically represent the meter. You can see how uh, this guy over here, like these two are both at 58 and my heal is at 51. Now, if they're a faster, if they've got higher speed than me, they might actually overtake my healer, but they're not really gonna overtake my Sampo because, you know, he's he's got a pretty decent uh, lead on them. So they, it's gonna be really hard for them to catch him. He'd have They'd have to have a lot of speed. So to turn these numbers on, that's another thing. So if we go over here into the settings, um, we can go ahead and whether to display a character's action value during a battle. You come over here and you put this onto display. Now, that that is something I like doing because it gives you a gauge of where in the order they actually are, not just like what like who is where, but how far behind each other. It lets you know that maybe you might overlap them and get an extra turn. So I like having that on. The other thing is that you can do in settings is you can have your ultimate on auto when you're in auto mode, or you can take your ultimate onto manual so that maybe you want to play it on auto, but the AI is really bad at using your ultimates, then you can just control your ultimates and basically watch it and play it pseudo manually. So that's another thing you can do, but that is the turn gauge and how it works. Now let's take a look at the skills themselves. So all your characters are gonna have three skills that they can use in combat. We obviously saw that we have the skill that we can use outside of combat to enter into it, but we also have three skills. So we have here a, a, a Q skill, which is your basic attack. Essentially when you use this, it's gonna be very basic. Most characters that has no additional effect unless some of their traces or skill tree add effects to it. But in general, it's just gonna be deal a bit of damage. So it's not a fantastic skill, but it does genu generate you one of these skill points. Now you can see here, it's indicated that it's flashing blue on this bluey aqua, let's call it aqua, on the next skill point. So I've only got three at the moment, but it's flashing that showing me that it would generate me another one. However, I can use my other skill, my E skill, which is going to have more powerful effects, normally deal more damage, have debuffs, all that kind of stuff. It's just a better skill. And this one actually consumes a skill point. You can see that I'm on three. Now it's showing one flashing red, which means I'm going to lose one of those skill points. Now, keep in mind for pretty much every character, your E is also going to generate more of your ultimate gauge than your Q. So that's something else that you have to consider when you're choosing which ability to use. Not only your skill points, because these are shared among your whole team. So you really wanna manage these skill points uh, and you know make sure that if you have a crucial skill, maybe one of your characters is low and you need to heal from your healer, don't get around to your healer's turn and have zero skill points because then you're gonna be screwed. Um, but over here on my Dan, I'm just gonna use my, uh, my Q ability because as you can see, this is the ultimate gauge. Now the other two characters, they're behind my head, you can't see them, but at least you can see Dan's ultimate gauge. He is very close to full. So as you use attacks, some characters have skills that increase this. Once you get it full, you can use your ultimate. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit this ability. And as you can see, that brought me up to full gauge. Now, the cool thing about these ultimates is you can actually jump into the turn order whenever you want and use these. And the cool thing is it doesn't even have to be your turn. So to demonstrate that, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my healers one here. Um, we're just gonna pop that. We're gonna go to Natasha and we're gonna pop a heal. As you can see, it's not her turn, but I can still jump in and use a heal and get my team topped off if I want to. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, slowly do this slowly so I hopefully don't kill them. 
Uh, and what I'm going to do is, you're going to see here, so right now is my Natasha's turn. I'm going to use an attack with her, but then I'm going to spam my number three once one of the enemies starts attacking and show you that I can actually jump in with Dan's ultimate between two enemies attacking. So let's see if I can time this right now. Sometimes you might want to put it on one time speed as well to do this, but let's just go ahead and do a basic attack here. Let him attack. And as you can see here, I've jumped in between the two enemies attacking to get my ultimate off before them. So you can actually cut in front of anyone with your ultimates, which is a pretty cool effect, especially with the way some characters' ultimates work and stuff like that. It can be really beneficial. So also, a lot of the bosses will have two turns in a row where bosses will use one attack and then maybe they'll use another attack or another prepare attack or something like that. And what I like to do is let them use their first attack and cut in between their first and second attack on the boss if they are really close to being broken. And then if you break them with that ultimate, it will actually stop them doing that second attack. So it's like they've already had their turn, which is a really helpful thing to do as well. So that is pretty much the basics to it. Like I said, you've got the stuff that you can do from outside of combat coming in, then you want to break. So now you can see here again, the previous wave was a bit bad. Now you can see wind he's weak against. So this is going to offer me some extra break. Now, if I use my E, it's going to give them more break. So the, the E skill is normally going to give you more break and generate more alt gauge, whereas the Q skill is going to give you less break and less alt gauge, but it's going to generate a skill point as opposed to consuming one. And that is pretty much all the basics. Now, some enemies will also have resistances. So you can always click on this thing here. You can just click on um, the enemy's portrait. And you can check here at what their resistances are. Now, this guy has none, but it will be above their health bar. And sometimes they have immunity. Some bosses are immune to being frozen, so you can't use freeze strategies on them. But some of them also do resist an element, meaning they will take less damage from that element. Uh, and the weakness, they will also take extra damage from the weakness as well. Just remember, once again, if they, they're not weak against you, you can't do any toughness damage to them, and you cannot break them so that is a very important thing once again to remember now if be behind my head here i'm just going to move it quickly you can see this little c button now you can press c for it or you can click on that little uh little icon uh, and that is going to bring up your character panels which allows you to see all the buffs on your characters the duration of the buffs their stats everything now also if you do have shields the shield displayed in the game i don't really like because you can't visually see how much shield you have the only way to see how much shield you have is to click on this down here and you can just see it next to my head it says shield zero. So that's where you can actually go ahead and see your shield level. You can also check exactly how much energy you have. Keep in mind, different characters will have different energy. As you can see here, we need 120 to use Sampo. We need 120 to use her. But Dan is only at the 100 and Natasha only has 80, meaning she can heal more often. So those are all the little things you can check as well. Also, if you're in the middle of a combat and you want to check what a skill does, you can go here and check all your passives and everything on your character. Otherwise, Otherwise, when you're just standing here, you can long press on ability. For instance, this Q ability, I long press it. It opens up and it shows me what it does. Deals minor wind damage to a single enemy. If I want to check what my E ability does, I can long press that. Deals wind damage to a single enemy. Upon crit hit, there's a high chance of slowing the enemy down. And then it same works with your ultimates as well. So you can long press them or you can go in and check out your character and go through that. So I think that pretty much covers all of the basics for combat that should get you pretty well underway uh if there is anything i missed i will throw it in the pinned comment if you guys have any other basic uh fundamentals of combat that i missed please let me know in the comments uh but yeah that's pretty much it for this one thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers